you so much for joining us on this Wednesday evening, May the 20th, 2020. I feel like this message may have a divine appointment for you because it's been so difficult uh, to get out to you at this point. And honestly, if you get it, it'll be a miracle. So just thank the Lord if it comes through. I wrestled with the Lord yesterday morning about what to share. I try to share what I feel like the Lord wants me to share. I don't want to just share something just for it to be a message. And I had settled on dealing with a passage from Luke chapter 18 uh, that I've entitled Spiritual Confusion. And about the time I settled on that message and had begun preparing it, I got a call that my diabetic daughter was really sick again. I can't tell you the number of times we've been down this road of uncertainty. You'd think we'd be prepared for it by now, but as you know, you're never prepared for the bumps in the road of life, especially if it involves sickness or pain in the lives of someone we love. All of us go through God-appointed times of spiritual confusion in our lives. We, we pass through seasons of uncertainty when we, when we wonder what God is doing, and sometimes it seems to us that God is inactive, that there are no answers to our prayers, there's no response from God. So we have a series of questions we ask. Is God at work in the silence? Is God at work in the mystery? Is he at work in the confusion? Is, is God at work in the pain? And we ask God why, and God says, I can't tell you right now, but I will. And for now, you, you just need to trust me in this dark place. And honestly, that's where our faith is put through a severe test. It's in trusting God when we've prayed and cried and called and there's no answer. It's resting in him when our heart wants to panic and our feet want to run. It's continuing to hope in God when there's no apparent reason to hope any longer. I love the little devotional book, My Utmost for His Highest. You should know that about me by now. So let me allow, let me, allow me to quote from uh, Oswald Chambers. He said, there are times in the spiritual life when there is confusion and there is no way out to say there ought not to be confusion. God is taking you by a way uh, in the meantime you don't understand. And it's only by going through the confusion that you'll get to what God wants. I don't know if that makes you feel any better, but that's what Oswald Chambers said. And that's, in fact, that's sometimes where we are. I was also struck by a statement I read from Experiencing God Day by Day. And there Henry Blackaby said, every event that God allows into your life is to make you more like Christ. I thought about that statement. Does, does God allow difficulty into our lives? Well, that's our journey. I mean, that's our practical experience. And I, I like to think that the Bible is very practical and God is practical because he knows our journey. In fact, he allowed Joseph to be imprisoned. He allowed Jonah to be swallowed by a great fish. Does he ever allow some difficulty to swallow me? Well, the answer to that is obviously, yes, he does. A.W. Tozer, a great writer, believed that God seldom used people greatly until he allowed them first to be hurt deeply. Let me read you what he said. He said, those Christian leaders who shook the world were one and all men of sorrows whose witness to mankind welled out of their heavy hearts. Well, Jesus is a prime example of that, isn't he? The Bible says that Jesus was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. The writer of Hebrews tells us more than once that it was our Lord's suffering that made him the perfect Savior. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7, he tells us that Jesus offered up both prayers and supplications with loud crying and tears. So should we expect our own experience with God to be any different than that of our Lord? Following the Lord's leadership doesn't require us to know where he's going or where he's taking us, but it does require on our part a determination to trust him even seems, even when it seems that we are not at that moment gaining a hearing from God. And so that becomes the basis of this parable that Jesus tells in Luke chapter 18, and that's what we're going to look at tonight. Jesus understood the heart of, heart of man because he walked our life journey. He walked the roads of this world, and he knew that there would be times when delay on God's part would tempt you and tempt me to question God's goodness and God's love. And so the parable he's going to share tells us that there are times from our perspective, when from our perspective, that God appears distant, aloof to our predicament. But in those times, our faith must press forward, 
clinging to hope, trusting that in his time, God will answer. So now I'm going to read from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Now he was telling them a parable to show them that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart, saying, in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him saying, Give me legal protection from my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God or respect man, yet because this widow, widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by her continually coming, she will wear me out. And the Lord said, Jesus said, did you hear what the unrighteous judge said? Now, will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night? And will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? When did Jesus say it was okay to give up on God? Well, the point of the parable is in the first sentence. At all times and under every set of circumstances, we're to pray and we're not to give up. We're not to lose heart. Why would you lose heart? Why would you give up? Well, if you had prayed for something once and you gave up when the answer didn't come after 15 minutes, that might say something about the nature of your faith and your own personal concept of God. But what if you prayed for days or maybe weeks or maybe months or longer clinging to hope that God would respond, and he didn't through that period of time. You might lose heart then. You might be tempted to give up, and you do that because of the delay. The delay on the part of the unjust judge was intended to cause the woman to give up. He wanted her to stop coming. She didn't, so he eventually gave in to her request. Now, the question Jesus raises is, is God like that? Does he withhold answers so that We'll give up. Well, no, there's another point to the parable. God's not like that at all, even when it seems to us that he is. God's desire is to answer quickly. But what if God doesn't answer quickly? Well, what is Jesus telling us? He's telling us to put our trust in the character of God. The deep desire of God's heart is to respond to our cries. And if there's delay, it's not intended to cause us to stop praying. What should we do? We ought to keep on praying and not give up. We ought always to pray and not to faint. Keep pressing your way into God's presence and know that the deeper your desperation, the deeper the desire of God's heart to give you an answer. Oswald Chambers suggested that it's in these times of spiritual confusion that all we can do is simply rest our hope in the character of God. We keep believing what Jesus said is true, even though in the meantime, we don't understand what he's doing. He has bigger issues at stake than the particular thing about which you ask. So I ask you in your personal crisis, or I ask, have to ask myself in the crisis that I'm facing, in your present crisis, how could there be bigger issues at stake? What about Mary and Martha when they sent for Jesus when Lazarus was sick? It was, it was quite urgent when he got the message instead of coming, he delayed. He stayed where he was for two more days. Did that delay deepen their grief? Yes, it did. Did it intensify the crisis? Yes, it did. Did that delay have a purpose that would bring them to know the Lord Jesus in a way they had never known him before? Yes, they would come to know him as not just a friend, but as the resurrection and the life. Uh, does it seem to you that God is slow in responding to your prayers? Has this present crisis that you're in caused you to question his goodness? Is the crisis increasing? Is your desperation deepening? What should you do? What did Jesus say? He said, you ought to keep on praying and not to give up. Don't faint. Don't lose heart. I want you to listen to a few of David's prayers because it's good to understand that characters in the Bible also walk the same roads that we walk. They're human just as much as we are, and they had struggles with their faith when they asked God some questions. From Psalm 6, verses 1 through 3, David wrote, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or chasten me in your wrath. 
Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am pining away. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are dismayed and my soul is greatly dismayed. But you, O Lord, how long? And then from Psalm 13, verses 1 through 4. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart all the day? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death, and my enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my adversaries will rejoice when I am shaken. One more, Psalm 80, verses 4 and following. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with the prayer of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears, and you have made them to drink tears in large measure. Obviously, there were days of confusion in David's life when he under, struggled to understand God's delay. What is God doing? Why is God allowing this to happen? And why in the world is it taking him so long? Are you passing through the fog of some spiritual confusion? What should you do? Well, we ought to pray and not give up. Keep praying, keep trusting, keep your eyes on Jesus. I've had to remind myself of that over the last couple of days as my daughter's circumstances weigh heavy on my heart. And in, a, in his own moment of spiritual confusion, the prophet Habakkuk uttered this cry. He said, Though the fig tree should not blossom, and there be no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive should fail, and the fields produce no food, Though the flock should be cut off from the fold and there be no cattle in the stalls, yet I will exult in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength and he has made my feet like hinds feet and he makes me walk on my high places. As you know, high places are difficult places, places where we can't walk on our own without God's help. And so Habakkuk waited for the help that only came from God, and he determined that his faith would not waver. Does God ever delay an answer? Well, from our perspective, the answer is yes, and we won't always understand why. Our faith will be tested, and during those moments of spiritual confusion, everything in us will want to give up, but Jesus said we ought to keep on praying and not give up. Does God ever drag things out? Does he ever relish seeing us cling to the end of our praying rope? Does he ever wait for waiting's sake? Well, we'll know. God works in his own time and in his own way for our greatest good and his greatest glory. Our fervency in prayer should never be diminished by the numbers, number of days that we have prayed. God's delays are always a matter of our perspective. God's timing is always perfect. Chambers said that spiritual confusion may shroud the Father's friendship, it may cast a shadow on the Father's face. It might cast a cloud on the Father's faithfulness, but it does not change the truth about the Father's heart. So Jesus said in verse 8 of Luke 18, I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So maybe you find yourself in a season of spiritual confusion you don't understand what God is doing in your life. You, you've been praying and you don't seem to be getting any response from God. And from, from your perspective, from your watch and your calendar, God appears late. What will you do? Will you give up or will you keep trusting God? When the answer comes, and my experience has been sometimes after I gave up, the answer came and I was ashamed that I gave up on God. So when the answer comes, will you have abandoned your hope in God or will you be waiting in faith for his answer. Will he, when he comes, find faith in your heart? I don't know what kind of battle you face tonight. I don't know what kind of spiritual confusion clouds your perspective, but I know this, the one who did not come down from the cross so that he might save you will not abandon you in the trenches of your personal circumstances. Don't lose heart. Don't give up. Don't faint. Keep praying. Keep waiting. Keep believing. Let me remind you of something as we all grope our way from time to time through the fog of some spiritual confusion. We're prone to forget that although Jesus has passed through his season of sorrow and 
is now up in heaven. He never abandons us in our sorrow. The writer of Hebrews says that he ever lives to make intercession for us. That means he's praying for you right now. That means he's praying for me right now. He is in the trenches with us, laboring in prayer for the situations we face. He knows what it is to stand in a position of helplessness. He knows what it is to encounter spiritual confusion. He has not, and he will not abandon you. I remind myself of that on days like today when I find myself wandering in the fog of some spiritual confusion. My prayer for you, as well as for myself, is that we might, by God's own providence, run right into the cross and find our Lord with us in the fog of our circumstances. I want to thank you so much for listening. I want to remind you that we're having three services now on Sunday, one at 8.30, one at 9.45, and one at 11 o'clock. You're safe at home. You've been safe at home for a while. It's time to come on back and be even safer at church. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you.